All right, continuing with assignment two. So I'm just going to scroll down on the home page to assignments in order to jump right to it. And this is our second compositing assignment. We just turned in our fantasy landscapes. They're all scored for you, and I have there are comments on them. So I'm going to go right to where we post. And here are the directions, and these are the basic steps. You have to start with a sketch. It's helpful to have your sketch based on some sort of external inspiration. I recommend Pokemon, but any inspiration can work. Then from your sketch, you get ideas about what kind of reference to look for. We want photo reference. So we're not combining cartooning with photography with watercolor painting. We want it all to be believable, three-dimensional photography so that it looks representational and believable. So today we're going to collect that reference and then map it onto our sketch, kind of doing rough cutouts, so that then we can use some new tools uh, that build on what we did for the landscape to color correct them, seam them all together, and then use things like clone stamp and dodging and burning to have even lighting and textures you know, all throughout our creature. We want our creature to be head to toe so that we can put it into any environment. So this is the sketch that I had started last class. And so my first step now is to look at that sketch. I'll just double click it and open it in preview and have it kind of in the corner. And mine is inspired by a combination of a couple Pokemon, one that's more rhinoceros based, one that's kind of this spiky upright platypus thing. And so if anything, I might add to this and maybe add some ridges on the back or something to help this silhouette. But notice this character is very uh, top heavy. You know, it's all about the shoulders and the head. And so it gets a lot smaller in the back. But I'm going to play with the webbed feet in the back and the more rhino features, buffalo features, maybe a lizard head, maybe a crest of some sort. So what do I need to do? I need to go to Pixabay. Before I go into Photo P, I want to go to Pixabay. I can use Google Images, but I'm going to spend a lot of time just quality checking what I find. Whereas Pixabay, it's always going to be good quality. If you log in, which I recommend, you'll get the, the highest quality downloads, but you can download the second highest quality without ever logging in if, if that's a limit to you. You want to scroll past the royalty free, or no, sorry, you want to scroll past any sponsored content. And what we're looking at are these royalty free ones. So I was just scrolling on what was recently uploaded yesterday. And I didn't know that people put royalty free music on here too, which is great. If you're like a filmmaker, if you need musical tracks, there was a lo fi, like study playlist, all royalty free on here. So there's a lot on Pixabay that's free for us to share and use. All of this is landscape photography. So I'm going to search a little bit. Oh, that's because I searched landscape. <laughs> I'm going to search, let's say, uh, Rhino. And then I want to scroll past the sponsored images, right? And look, now there's a lot of good Rhino images. But the reason I did my sketch first is I know the angle that I want to find the reference. So I need it kind of tilted towards me at a three-quarter view. I'm looking over the top of it a little bit. And so I'm looking for a pose that has good quality that might fit that. This is close because, remember, we've transformed enough stuff. We know how we can flip it horizontally. So though it's facing this way, I just flip it horizontally and it's facing this way. So if I want to download that, I click download. If you don't want to sign in, you could do this one without having to sign in. As long as it's over a thousand pixels, it should work in both dimensions. And when you download it, it goes to your downloads folder. So then I'm just going to move it off. And if I'm really organized, I open up my folder, assignment two, and I have my references and I add it to my references. I'll put my references over here, right? What I like to do is to right click and then open link in new tab so I can just always go back to my search, see if I can find something 
else. This one's really clean, a little baby rhino. Open it in a new tab, download it. And I could scroll through. There are 16 pages of rhinos. There's bound to be lots. But I don't want to rely on one, one image more than others. I like baby animals because they can look really odd already, you know, and give you some, some interesting proportions to work with. So I'm downloading more than I need. And then I'll pick my, my most successful ones, you know, to, to use. And I might, when I'm excited about a reference, like this one I hadn't seen before, it looks pretty interesting. I might mark it green. And that reminds me, okay, this one is a, is a good one to work with. It's got very clear anatomy to it that I can, I can use parts of. All right, other things, let's see. Maybe a crest. So lots of birds. Maybe a dinosaur crest. This is always getting added to. How about a dragon? So it's amazing how much good quality reference there is on Pixabay for you. So I just want something that makes the head interesting. Because I like to build my head for more than just one reference. But I need it at the right angle. And as long as it's photorealistic. And on Pixabay, it's free to use. Yeah, I think I want maybe more iguana. Or I'll do a uh, beetle. to a black beetle. And you can set it to be only photos as well. So you can skip all of the, the illustration. Why are ladybugs included in black beetles? I guess they do black and red. Yeah, I'm looking for this kind of thing, but I want them at the right angle. Here we go. Yeah, you could you could use like more and more qualifying because there are 86 black beetles. So I could do like horned or rhinoceros beetle or there we go. And that's I think that's the reference I already pulled. Oh, no, it's different. Yeah, I like this one. So it shows how I can use vertebrates and invertebrates as long as I have a skeletal template to help ma map everything together. It goes to downloads. It's a bit of a chore. I drag it into my references. All right, now let's look for some feet. I already got a buffalo I liked. You know, I have kind of a the head of he's going to do a caiman. Or this triangular head. It's angled the right way. Actually, I like this one. This Cayman lizard. It's always nice to have some color, if possible. And you don't want it underwater unless it's really sharp. And that looks sharp enough. I think I can use that for my head reference. And then I'll build some horns on that or a crest on that. And, of course, I'm going to flip it. So I can do that in transform. I can just do that right in preview. So that's kind of the triangular shaped head I wanted. And it's already looking down, not as far down, but enough. 
that it still works with the anatomy. All right, platypus. So working as a professional, you would probably do like 15 to 30 of these in a day, like really rough composites of different concepts. But you would also build what's called a morgue of, of image references, mostly royalty free, that you could just pull from easily. So you would have your favorites. So I'm going to look for duck feet. And it'd be great if I could find them already connected to a body in a way that was engaging and interesting at the right angle. And feet can be the hardest thing to find because it's hard to find them unobscured by the environment, right? Like they're in grass, they're in water, they're in mud. But this one, as awkward as it is, can help. And then I might want different kind of back legs, so I just use those feet, but I use a different kind of rear end. So I'm going to look for, well, I already have the buffalo. Let's see, maybe I can use the rear legs here. Yeah, I think I'll be okay. I'm trying not to be too, uh, too ambitious so I can get it all done, because you only need five or more. All right, so now, now we're ready to get started. I have my sketch. you got to get your sketch in the computer. It's a good idea to post it into Canvas, just to acknowledge the deadline. Now I'm going to open up that sketch right into Photopea, which means, like we did before, I open Photopea, but I don't say new file. And I'm not logged into Photopea or anything. I just drag and drop my sketch into it. It can be a photo from my phone. It can be just this JPEG I saved. Then what you're going to do is use the crop tool, which is the fifth tool down. And you're going to crop to a rectangle that contains your creature sketch in the way you would want it to print. Right? So we want it head to toe. We want to leave enough white space around it. And then hit return. You've cropped it down. Then you want to use your move tool. And you want to click on your ruler. If you don't see your rulers, hit Command-R. And with that Move tool, which is at the very top of your toolbar, you're going to click on the ruler and bring down guides. And you're going to bring down guides around all four sides. Or bring over guides until all four sides are framed. That's called framing your image. So we know what our final image dimensions will be for our physical format. Then, only then, do we go to image, image size, and we set it to the pixels we need. So we need it to be bigger than 8 by 10 inches, and we want it bigger than 300 pixels per inch. So I'm going to change pixels to inches, and I'm going to change the smallest one here, which is 5.29. I'm going to change that to 8 and see if that gets me up to 8 by 10, and it does, 8 by 11. But if it's like 8 by 9, then I need to change that 9 to a 10 or to an 8. Because you can always go bigger than 8 by 10. Don't go small. Then I'm going to change the pixels per inch from 72, which is screen resolution, to at least 300, which is standard minimum print resolution. But for our studio, we're going to do 350. So I have 8 by 11 by 350. I say OK. And you can see how much it distorts as it grows. I do Command minus to zoom out. And if I want to ever check that, I can go to Image, Image Size. So I know it's big enough now. It takes up 11 megapixels. Okay, now I want to give myself some working space. So I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size. You have to set your resolution before you set your canvas. And now I'm going to grow the space outside of my sketch beyond 8 by 11 to the largest printing size that a professional printing press can accommodate, and that is 40 inches by 30 inches. Okay, the reason 
I needed those framing 